Good morning. Glad you could join us for your daily dose of God time. Uh, we are looking at the life of the Apostle Paul, even at his conversion and then what God did with his amazing life. You say, where do you get your material? Well, I'm getting it uh, during these character studies with, from Great Days with the Great Lives by Charles Swindoll. Uh, highly recommend it. Great, great book. This morning we're in Acts chapter 9 again. It seems like, are you ever going to get off verses 1 through 4? Well, we are. Now I want us to go to verse 10 through 21 in the, in the book of Acts uh, chapter 9. Here's what it says. There was a disciple in Damascus named Ananias. And the Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias, here I am, Lord, he said. Get up and go to the street called Straight, the Lord said to him. To the house of Judas and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul, since he is praying there. In a vision he has seen a man named Ananias coming in and placing his hands on him so he can regain his sight. Lord, Ananias answered, I've heard from many people about this man, how much harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem, and he has authority here from the chief priest to arrest all who call on your name. But the Lord said to him, Go. For this man is my chosen instrument to take my name to the Gentiles, kings, and the Israelites. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. So Ananias left and endured the house. Then he placed his hands on him and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road you were traveling, has sent me so that you can regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. At once, something like scales fell from his eyes, and he regained his sight. Then he got up and was baptized, and after taking some food, he regained his strength. Saul was with the disciples in Damascus for some days. Immediately, he began proclaiming Jesus in the synagogues. He is the Son of God. But all who heard him were astounded and said, Isn't this the man who, in Jerusalem, was destroying those who called on this name, and then came here for the purpose of taking them as prisoners to the chief priest? That's a turnaround. We talked yesterday morning about repentance. Today, we're talking about this surprise. I want to look at it today from Ananias' side for just a moment. Surprises are always part of God's leading. In Saul's case, the surprise came in the form of a light from heaven, marking a life-changing transformation. For Ananias, it was a seemingly unreasonable and illogical command from the Lord, delivered in a dream or in a vision. <laughs> Here's the bottom line. If you're waiting on God to fill in all the shading in your picture, you will never take the first step of obeying God's will. You must be prepared to trust his plan, knowing it will be full of surprises, and surprises are always part of God's leading. Surprises always intensify our need for faith. When you encounter the surprising element of God's will, your faith must engage full throttle. You must grow. Otherwise, you'll turn and run in the opposite direction. At times, God's plan will frighten you. Or you'll be intimidated by His demands. Other times, you'll be disappointed. For instance, when God tells you no, to wait, or to sit tight, you'll want to argue. Or if He tells you to go and you're comfortable, you might not want to go. You may decide to fight. You might attempt to negotiate. You may become angry. But when your faith kicks into gear, none of those impulses will control you. Faith says, I can do this. I trust you, Lord. I don't understand everything, but I trust you completely. Let's do it. Quite possibly, God has a major move in store for you in the future. After almost 55 years on this earth and having spent 32 of those studying and learning more about the ways of God, I can tell you His will for our lives is full of surprises. He has more moves in mind for us than we could possibly anticipate, and they're not all geographical. Many are attitude adjustments. Some mean moving us out of our comfort zones to touch the lives of people we've never met. Or we might be in for a cross-country or cross-cultural journey that requires a level of faith we've not exercised in the past. Be careful about feeling too settled where you are, physically, emotionally, spiritually, or geographically. If the Lord wants you to move, I strongly suggest you cooperate regardless of the risks. 
If he leads you to change, then change, even if it's difficult. Surprises from God always intensify our need for faith. So look for the surprises. Because if God asks you to do something and you can be totally comfortable in it, either you have more faith than just about anybody else in the history of the Bible, or um, maybe it's not God speaking. But if God surprises you, and it requires a great measure of faith to accomplish, that's a god size ask. God will almost never ask you to do what is capable in your power. He will always ask what's capable only by God working through you. Remember, it's Christ in you that's the hope of glory. Let me pray for you today that you might both recognize his surprises, be moved by them, and act on them, bringing a smile to the face of God himself. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. I thank you that you trust us, that you believe, Father, in us even more than we believe in you. And you give us these God-sized tasks that we couldn't do of our own. We're too frail. We're too weak. We're not smart enough. But then you put inside of us your Holy Spirit. And all of those things are then able to be done. Father, I pray for myself and for those, my friends listening, that we would be led and empowered by your Holy Spirit to meet the challenge that you place before us. Help us, Lord, to seek the adventure that you have for us and to fulfill it so that whenever we cross that finish line someday, we hear those words, well done, my good and faithful servant. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I pray you have an incredible day. Please, please today, love God, love one another, and by all means, go be salt and light.